know about you, but when I heard step two in Alcoholics Anonymous, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity, I had a huge problem with that. Because when I was sitting around the little table and people were talking, they talked a lot about God and spirituality. And when I first came into AA, and you know, like 30 years ago, I couldn't even sit down in a chair properly. I, I had no concept of a higher power or God. I knew of God, I was born and raised Catholic. I knew who God was and all that kind of thing, but I, I didn't really understand it. And I didn't really believe in it. And after all, if God really knew my problems, he couldn't help me anyways. I thought it was hokey pokey, I really did. I thought it was like Santa Claus, this whole God thing. So I'm sitting there in these rooms and they're talking about it, about return us to sanity and I, and, I, and I didn't get it. I really didn't get it, I didn't. But there's another part that people talk about when it comes to step two, and that's open-mindedness. Keep an open mind, Terry, just keep an open mind. And that's another part of step two that people talk about a lot. It's about keeping an open mind. We don't have to get it all at once. We don't have to get it. And a lot of alcoholics even have a problem with that, the open-mindedness. I know I did. I was full of fear. I was anxious. I had a lot of problems going on. I had cop problems. I had wife problems. I had child support problems. I had a lot of things. And the last thing I could do is keep an open mind about anything. I was full of anger. I was pretty rigid. And a lot of alcoholics who come into AA are pretty rigid. The world to them is black and white. There's no gray, there's no in between, right? There's no in between. You know why that is? Because our life sucked. We were in survival mode all the time. I don't know about you, but I was in survival mode most of the time. I really was. So it was difficult for me to keep an open mind too. It really was. But you know something? It made a little bit of sense to me. It cracked open the door a little bit just to keep an open mind. And the open mind simply means to me this when it comes to step two. Just understand Terry G, or you guys understand that my way, my way I was leading my life up to now, up to when I was in my thirties, didn't work for me. And there was another way of living that was better than the way I was living. And that's what open-mindedness meant to me in the 12 steps when it came to step two. And you know, open, you know what they say, step one is honesty, step two is open-mindedness, and step three is willingness. And this open-mindedness when it came to step two really helped me. It really helped me, but it took work. It took me two years, three years to open my mind enough to say, you know, Terry, you're like, the way you're doing things is not working. I was sober, but I was a dry drunk. Still, I was still berserk. It took me a while. I didn't think I was insane. I didn't think I had problems, but I came by it innocently. I lived, I lived a very hard life until I entered Alcoholics Anonymous. I had to make snap decisions all the time. Things were black and white to me. I was very rigid in my thinking just to open up my mind and settle down enough to say to myself, there is a better way. There is a better way of living just to keep an open mind. And you know something? The door opened wider and wider and wider. And before I knew it, I was living the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous, one day at a time to the best of my ability. I had to get rid of this closed-minded attitude. I had to understand that I was insane. Just because I sobered up and stopped the booze, I was still insane. I was still having, you know, I still wasn't functioning on all cylinders. Things were difficult. Came to believe that a power greater than myself could restore me to sanity. The power greater than myself was the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous, was the people in the meetings in my sponsor. They were the power greater than myself. And I just kept applying that and reaching out, keeping an open mind. And eventually I had the willingness to move forward in those steps. I had to give up the old way of thinking, the old beliefs that my, my way worked and I had to start listening to other people and taking their suggestions seriously to help me out 
with my difficulties because my problem, my life was still running rampant, irritable discontent, even when I was in recovery, even when I was in recovery and it lasted for a while. I had to change my attitude. I had to change my views on things. And the number one thing, I had to give myself a break and trust the journey, trust the process of the steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. That's what I had to do. And that was major, major faith for me. Major. I was a loner. I was an island. I was full of hurt. I was full of anger. To let go and trust other people, trust the journey, took a lot of work. There was a lot of fear in there. There was a lot of hurt in there. And there was a lot of anger in there. There really was. And chiseling away at that took a lot of time and a lot of effort. It really did, okay? Getting sober is not impossible. Trust in the journey. Keep an open mind when it comes to step two that your way is not working. And just keep moving forward and doing the best you can. The world is not black and it's not white. There's a lot of gray in there. And that gray, when it comes to recovery, is a new way of living for you and for me, okay? My name is Terry G. This is an alcohol-free life channel where we learn to live sober one day at a time. Thanks a lot for stopping by. If you could take a second, can you please subscribe to my channel? Take another second, hit that like button. But can you all do me one favor? Leave a comment below, okay? Stay safe, stay sober. God bless one day at a time, and I'll see you next week. Ciao for now. Bye-bye.